everyone poops, but why? Science has largely ignored this question because many think we've answered it. Our bodies poop to rid ourselves of waste. But this leaves two glaring gaps in our understanding. Why create waste at all? And why in particular does that waste have to be so gross? <laughs> the answer lies within, because over 50% of the dry material in human feces is bacteria. And in fact, over 50% of the cells on your body right now are microbial. Despite this, humans think that we <laughs> are better than microbes. Are we though? <laughs> microbes were here billions of years before we were. The human body is actually just a squishy wrapper around one giant tube that is filled with microbes. <laughs> they sit around all day while we run around collecting resources that we shove down that tube, <laughs> giving them directly to the microbes. And when the bacteria are ready to get off, <laughs> we have a selection of convenient orifices for them to choose from for egress. The microbial dispersal hypothesis explains all these facts and more. <laughs> Plain and simple, microbes are slow. They needed vehicles. So they used the only tool they had, DNA, to create first eukaryotic cells, then multicellularity, then larger body plans, organs, vertebrates, and eventually the near-perfect disperser, a semi-intelligent machine <laughs> written in an impenetrable code, programmed to excrete constantly and in all directions. <laughs> Once you realize that we are a walking, talking, microbe-dispersing bus, it's obvious why we produce waste. And it also answers why it has to be gross, why every single gas, liquid, and solid you produce is disgusting. <laughs> because we, they want to get away from us. If you doubt that every single gas, liquid, and solid you produce is gross, let's just run through them real quick. We have our marquee disperser, feces. We have urine, <laughs> saliva, sweat, phlegm, vomit, earwax, mucus, breast milk, menstrual blood, semen. Others, there are probably more. I don't know. Uh, you might be able to think of one, and if you have something to add to this list, I'm guessing it's gross. <laughs> because our body has nothing to do with human interests and everything to do with dispersal. But microbes didn't just build the bus, they drive the bus. <laughs> the microbes in your body weigh as much as your brain, and they're largely in your gut, which is nestled inside our enteric nervous system, which directly links the microbes in your gut to your brain. They would not need this architecture if they were just along for the ride. They use it to control our behavior. But wait. <laughs> but wait, you say. I always make rational decisions that best fulfill my needs. <laughs> this is demonstrably false via what I call the Taco Bell phenomenon. <laughs> Here we have a person who may or may not be hungry. They see a Taco Bell and they think, I don't want Taco Bell. <laughs> they have emotional, physical, and intellectual reasons for not wanting Taco Bell, and yet, <laughs> here I am eating Taco Bell, followed by confusion <laughs> and dispersal. At no point in this process was our totally hypothetical person 
making a good rational choice because microbes were in control. And this is not the only example of humans making irrational choices in the name of microbial dispersal. So now I have a four question self quiz so that you can see the raw power of the microbial dispersal hypothesis based on your own answers. So, have you ever traveled by air? <laughs> the seats are smaller than you are, the air is recycled, and you're likely in mutually unwanted physical contact with the person next to you for the duration of the flight. There uh, is no good reason to put ourselves through this. There is no dignity or pleasure in flying economy. <laughs> Why do we do this? Because the only thing more efficient than a bus is putting that bus on a plane with hundreds of other disgusting buses, two coffin-shaped bathrooms, and dropping people off across the globe. Dispersal. <laughs> Have you ever liked someone so much you put your mouth on theirs? <laughs> For an extended period of time, and just swallowed whatever liquid slurry <laughs> the two of you produce. Why would you do that? <laughs> oh. 10 seconds of intimate kissing transfers 80 million bacteria. There's no other explanation. Have you ever imbibed? Humans cannot stop ourselves from this behavior. There is never not a reason to drink. I'm happy, I'm sad, it's a holiday, it's my birthday, it's the weekend, it's happy hour, it's five o'clock somewhere, let's drink. And yet, we all know that this leads directly to dispersal events. But we do it anyway, because it's gonna be fun. Yay! Oh. What happened? You blacked out, that's what happened. Ugh. We're not even mentally present for the fun. Maybe it's best you don't know how many parking meters you licked. You know? Uh. So who do we have to thank for this? Microbes make alcohol. Uh. Coincidence? No. Because the only explanation for going from this <laughs> to this <laughs> is this. <laughs> All right, this is the last one. Have you ever wanted or had children? <laughs> this is absolutely irrational because children objectively lower the quality of your life. <laughs> At least on all the pleasurable axes. Our drive to procreate is actually microbes driving the bus toward more buses. <laughs> so we're hardwired to think that they're cute, which they are. I mean, look at this guy. This is my F1. Um, <laughs> and because babies have no control of their brains or bodies, they have the additional microbial benefit <laughs> of dispersal. Yeah. <laughs> In summary, the microbial dispersal hypothesis explains both humans and our humanity. Our greatest achievements, like love and technology, and our grossest emissions. So if you ever feel like you're not living up to your greater purpose in life, go outside, look up at the moon, and feel the pride we all share that the American flag is up there. And find comfort in the fact that microbes drove us to the moon. <laughs> and there we fulfilled our greatest purpose by pooping on it.